change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, I'm out behind my house again doing some trail work and listening to the book Brain Maker. Really interesting look at how the cultures in our gut affect our brain. Anyway, as I'm listening, I'm working on the stone wall and this giant rock right here, which is far too big for me to lift out of the hole without some serious scaffolding and pulleys and ropes and chains and all that kind of fun stuff. So I've been taking another tactic to get this rock out of here. And as I was working on this for the past day and a half, a single rock, I thought, hmm, this applies to the steps that I talk about, the little baby steps. So I'm going to show you how to get a rock out of the way and how to get a large obstacle out of your way in life because it's the same process. Okay, so check this out. My intention is to build a trail that goes north-south through the entire length of our property, but the problem is that you interact with this stone wall that goes east and west all through our entire property. So I started by clearing out the stones uh, where I wanted to put the trail, and that was quite a job. That took me almost a day to heft all of these stones out of the way and to build these little like guide piles along the sides of the trails. But then when I was all done with the vast majority of the stones, I found this guy. It is a monster. It's like three feet by three feet and maybe two and a half feet thick. Probably weighs five to six hundred pounds. Now my natural instinct and first inclination is that I need to get the rock up and out. I need to somehow lift it out of the trail and heft it up onto this pile or heft it over here somewhere where it can become... Uh, a reminder of all the hard work I did. So what happens in life is that we have these big ideas, these big dreams. Uh, we read a book and we get all inspired and it tells us that no obstacle is too big and that we can move mountains. And we come along and we see a mountain that needs to be moved and we're like, all right, I can lift that, no problem. I'll just lift it up out of the hole because this book told me that I'm superhuman and that matter is really just energy, so I just need to change my frequency and I'll be able to levitate this rock or something like that. Who knows? But we often get these ideas that tell us we can do more than we actually can. And then when we actually have to go to the gym every day and do the thing that we were inspired to do, we're like, oh, I don't like this. It's too hard. The weight is too heavy. I can't lift it. You know, I want to be a superhuman football player and be able to bench press 500 pounds. And we go to the gym and we're like, oh my God, I can only lift 100. And we give up because it's too much. So here's this rock. I could have given up because I looked at it and said, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to lift it up. And I was trying to devise all these plans to lift this rock out of the way. But then I thought about my little steps, my little dew drops. And I thought about depression. Yes, depression. I thought to myself that depression is a grounding. It's about digging deep. It's about getting down underneath and taking a look at the stuff that you don't want to deal with. Some stuff that you've never even seen before. It's been buried so deep for so long. But I've always said that's where the magic is. And that's how I've been able to do what I've done in life is by going deep and using my depression as a tool and not as a disease, not as a crutch, not as a reason not to do things. It's for me a type of insight that has allowed me to take on obstacles that are too big to deal with if you look at them the instinctive way. So when you look at this rock, you think it's got to be lifted because that's the solution. It's always about getting higher, lifting things up, lifting more weight. But it's too big. It's too heavy. How are you going to do that? So by using my little steps, my little dew drops, and my depression, I decided to instead go deep. And here's what that looks like. Rather than lifting this rock, I decided to dig a very large hole right next to the rock. In fact, the hole is bigger than the rock. It took me probably four hours to dig that hole today. It's eh, almost four feet deep and about four feet across. And the rock will fit nicely inside of it. And I only had to move one shovel at a time. I didn't have to move the entire rock. I didn't have to move all the dirt at once. I simply went down and spent half my day taking one shovel at a time. 
And now, rather than lifting the rock, I'll simply use this crowbar as a lever, and I will lever that rock down into the hole. I don't have to lift it up at all. I can use gravity to move the rock down for me. I have to do very, very little work. And what work I had to do, digging the hole, really didn't take that much effort because I could do it slowly, and I only ever had to lift a single shovel full of dirt at a time. It was a little step. So instead of trying to find this Herculean strength to lift this rock up, which I couldn't do, and I would have given up and walked away, instead I got small and I got deep and I got grounded and I dug a hole. And now that rock is going to have a new home and it's going to be a part of this trail rather than taking it out of my path so that I have this smooth path, this rockless, it's now actually going to be part of the foundational support of this path and I didn't have to break my back in order to get it there. Heave! Here we go! Hoo! 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 Who was it that said if you give me a fulcrum and a lever long enough, I will move the world. I am now moving the world. Oh, come on, baby, go. Go to your new home, do it. Go to your new home. So the next time you come across an obstacle that seems insurmountable, that's bigger than you, don't try to be bigger than it. Let yourself be small. Don't try to lift it. Don't try to rise up. Don't try to overcome. Undercut one little tiny shovel at a time. It doesn't take that much strength. You have enough strength to move one little shovel at a time and you can take breaks in between. Before you know it, you'll have dug a big hole and then with a little bit of effort and leverage, you can give that rock a new home. And instead of having the rock triumphantly on the side of the trail so that you can tell everybody, look at me, I moved that rock way back in the day, living in your glory days of what you've done, instead, that rock will now silently, quietly, and non-visibly support the very path that you walk on. It'll become a part of your path. It's part of you. It's not some foe that you conquered. It's not some giant head that you mount on your wall saying, look what I killed. It's now part of your path, part of your character. A solid support. So you may think that little steps are beneath you, and you're right. They are beneath you, and that's where the solution is. It's the path that you walk on. So make sure you create strong foundations by taking those obstacles and using them to your advantage rather than trying to conquer them. Let gravity do the work for you, all right? Get holy, dig a hole. See ya! I was walking in the woods one day in the merry, merry month of May. And much to my surprise, the sun blinded my eyes, and I got lost and led astray. Hey, hey.